Hello and welcome to um, episode 118. I forgot where I was for a minute. Episode 118, 118, 118 of the Eurogamer.net podcast. Uh, I am Tom Bramwell, uh, and I'm joined today by two very special gentlemen. Um, on my right, uh, Robert Bertie Purchase in the classic news pose. Tom, Velvet <laughs> Owl. <laughs> oh, spoiler. Um, you have also, um, we're also joined by the Velvet Owl, Will Porter. Hello. <laughs> Returning to the podcast. When were you last on the podcast? Um, a, a while ago, all I can remember is that myself and James went and had a bacon sandwich afterwards. Nice. <laughs> yeah. nice. But it was that memorable. James, <laughs> James who doesn't exist. No, we, yeah. don't, we don't talk about James. Um, so, what, do you remember what we were talking about? Not really. <laughs> These days, my life's just this big, big blur. Of don't, don't worry. None podcast of podcast and sing on my own at home. So, <laughs> well, don't worry. None of the audience remembers anything <laughs> either. So, um, none of the audience implies plurality, obviously, <laughs> which is just, it's a great leap. Um, so, we, we, I've got a pen today in case because uh, the last couple of podcasts we've done, people have said interesting things, and I thought, oh, we should go back to that. And then I've not had any means of recording that. So, I'm interested to see whether this this innovation, this um, this this pen. Can, uh, can take us in new and exciting directions today. Where's that pen from? Uh, my desk. Oh, okay. We've got actually a box. This is so boring. I'll just, I'll just get into it. We're going to be talking about two things today. Um, the first is uh, the very exciting news yesterday that uh, Dave Perry can afford a new golden yacht. David Perry. David Perry. So, um, yes, the news, the news that Sony has acquired um, the front man from Jamiroquai, JK. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Or, uh, uh, or or Gaikai, as it's sometimes known. So um, yeah, they spent a whopping three hundred and eighty million dollars, which is something like two hundred and forty million pounds, uh, and uh, something like seventy eight billion euros. Yeah, on uh, David Perry. <laughs> Do they actually get David Perry? Have the terms of the deal all been revealed? I don't know, but he's done a lot of posing pictures. Uh, yeah. As you find when you search for David Perry on Google, he is in an extraordinary amount of yeah. pictures. Yeah. If you put him, I mean, Kasurai and David Perry in the same space. That's a lot of manicure. I think David Perry would dominate that photo <laughs> shoot. So he's very tall. I've met him. He's, he he's very, very tall. He's a big guy, and he's very nice as well. He uh, is. So is that the big news that David Perry is very tall? <laughs> this, yeah. this is the very big news that uh, that's, David that's Perry is That's why they bought Guy Kai. Because <laughs> yeah. they would be really impressed by him when they <laughs> yeah. come into the room. Well, uh, he is, he's, this is the thing, actually. I mean, he is a tremendous um, salesman. Um, and it's very, if, you, if you ever sort of meet him socially, he's, he's, a very, very good, um, he's very good at making you think that the stuff he's saying is true. Mm-hmm. So I imagine he's quite good at selling companies. Companies, which seems to be the sort of thing he's done repeatedly right. through his career, including uh, this one yesterday. Um, but before we get onto that, the other thing we're going to talk about, of course, is Res, um, the PC and indie games show. I they, am so excited. And I it, haven't slept. <laughs> I can tell. Um, and in, the enormously um, exciting and handsome new uh, PC and indie games show we're doing in Brighton this weekend. So we'll, we'll hawk that a bit later. Um, but yeah, so Gaikai. Um, as Rob said... Uh, that Sony has bought it for 380 million US dollars. Um, and uh, all they've really said so far is a statement from um, Andrew House, isn't it? Yeah, everyone's excited. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's really pumped. Um, but Andrew, Andrew House, who is the group CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment, yesterday said, marking the announcement, um, that the company would um, combine Gaikai's resources, um, including its technological strength and engineering talent, no mention of David Perry's height, um, with Sony's extensive game platform knowledge and experience to provide users with unparalleled cloud entertainment experiences. Um, they will deliver, Sony will deliver a world-class cloud streaming service, and this is where it gets interesting, that allows users to instantly enjoy a broad array of content ranging from immersive core, type, core games with rich graphics to casual content anytime, anywhere, on a variety of internet-connected devices. So there's quite a lot of suggestion there. He's basically said it's going to be all things to all people at all times, yeah. as I understand it. There's an awful lot um, that could happen here, um, and a lot of ways that Sony could use this. And I think um, our readers, listeners, um, ought, to, listener. ought to note uh, that this has much broader implications for Sony as a business than PlayStation alone, and specifically PlayStation 3. Mm. and PlayStation 4, uh, the uh, inference being that Sony makes TVs, mm. uh, and at 3... We can definitely infer that. <laughs> at E3, Gaikai announced a big deal with Samsung TVs, uh, mm. basically to get Gaikai installed on smart TVs um, from the off, uh, which means, you know, 
you buy a TV, you don't need a console, you can buy games on, mm. uh, you can play games on your TV. This is a big area of it, and, and, and Sony's got a really ailing uh, TV business at the moment, and Gaikai is a great way for them not only to uh, add... A point or, of differentiation. Yeah, a point of differentiation on their TVs, but also to start... Um, as they've been trying with PlayStation Suite to, to link, to glue everything together mm. um, using Gaikai uh, and you know playing PS2, PS3 games on, on tellies uh, without a PlayStation 3 and on other devices, mm. you know, whatever they may be. It's quite an exciting prospect, certainly. Um, I mean, as you say, you, you could put this um, on, you could, you could use it as a sort of, um, uh, a kind of, force it a tap for turning on PlayStation on everything Sony does. So yeah. instead of simply having, you know, your kind of your uncharted experience on PlayStation 3 and nowhere else, you could suddenly access it on your Sony laptop, on your Sony tablet, on your Sony television, on your phone, um, maybe even on your um, your PC if you have some sort of if you own a PlayStation 4 or you have some sort of Sony account or something. And you know, with that you 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 get the, the potential of that added audience which potentially feeds more revenue back to the people making the games, allowing them to mitigate the risk a little bit on, yeah. uh, on all the, the huge expense of making you know these blockbuster games. So, so potentially I could have Earthworm Jim on my, on my <laughs> Sony phone, and then on my Vita I could have Earthworm Jim 2, while at the same time on my TV I could have Earthworm Jim 3D. That's absolutely yeah. ridiculous, Will. Everyone knows you don't own a Vita. <laughs> 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 but yes, that's the, that's yeah. the theory, really. Um, it, I think that's David's... I think that's his aim. Uh, yeah, he's, he's been working on this for years. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, it's just it's all an advanced Earthworm Jim delivery mechanism. <laughs> um, I, I, do, I do think this could, this could... I mean, you can see why this is flat. This is sort of exciting to Sony. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it moves them from out from being, you know, this ailing company, um, to use Rob's term, with um, a TV business in decline and um, a PlayStation business that everyone sort of feels is a bit behind Microsoft now yeah. in, in core terms. And does it have the potential? It sort of has the potential to, to catapult them back to much greater relevance. Absolutely. Well, um, near term. Um the general thinking is, and, and a big piece has just gone up on Eurogamer, um, that this is um, this is a move for PlayStation 4. Um, but near term, mm. you can expect Sony to try a load of stuff out on PlayStation 3 uh, to see if it works. And that means probably the first thing will be instantly streamed demos, which is good. You know, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but... Mm. When some demos are massive, as well, well yeah, some of them are the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. Um, you know. some are massive, and the idea that you could just load up PlayStation Store, click a demo, um, you know, maybe it's part of a PlayStation Plus membership, I mm. don't know, but you click a demo and you're playing it straight away, and it's, you know, it doesn't have to be the best, uh, most reactive experience in the mm. world. There can be a little bit of lag, uh, latency here mm. and there, uh, but the point is, you're playing the demo straight away, uh, and and you know that can then. Yeah, we convert it into a, a real purchase, and you download the full thing and and, yeah. and whatnot. It's it's definitely the sort of model that, that Dave Perry was always talking about. I also did see uh, this Geico presentation at E three. They uh, demonstrated this one click downloading mm. uh, stuff for Geico, which means you can get big files very quickly. I'm not sure what magic they're exactly doing, but um, it makes downloading a lot quicker, and that could come into play too. It's, it's one of the really interesting things about this is that one of the, the greatest hurdles to sort of enjoying Gaikai content so far, um, as anyone who's kind of used the demo area on Eurogamer for it has probably realised, is um, is Java, which is, um, you know, a total ball ache, for want of a better expression. You know, even, whatever computer you're using, it seems, you you know, you have to go through this slightly annoying process of installing Java. Every and that's day. the biggest yeah. impediment to actually... It. Speaking of someone that works on a game that's built in Java, I, I can assure you <laughs> that the uh, feelings are entirely yeah, yeah, shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, but obviously if you're, um, uh, if you're streaming to Sony platforms like a television or a PlayStation or a phone, Sony can ship those with... Or a tablet now, don't yeah, you? Yeah, Sony can ship all of those things with the, the required software pre-installed, which removes a lot of the impediment to actually trying stuff out. So, um, and, and creates a, a more frictionless experience, as, um, as David would no doubt yeah. say. So, so was this always the plan for, for Gaikai? Were they always going to build up a header steam and then to sell yeah. themselves? Oh, was, that, was that their long game? God, yes, yes. No, yeah, it's is, been, that, is that the same for on, on live as well? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a tricky question. I mean, I, I think that it's always been a race to get bought. Yeah. yeah, and Dave Perry basically won. Yeah, um, it's always been um, from what I've been hearing from um, a few people, and you can see it is that 
on live and Gaikai started out positioning themselves very differently, even if now they're very similar. Um, on live, uh, Gaikai, sorry, started as very much a business to business thing, uh, whereby it would be a way for publishers to demo their games. Um, and that was great. Um, and on live started as a way for consumers to play games and buy games and do things like that. So Gaikai was always the slightly more flexible, probably more alluring proposition to uh, people to acquire it because mm -hmm. it. You know, there was less of that, all that other stuff to have to deal with yeah. as well. Whereas on live now is a bit of a, a bloated beast in a way for someone who wants to go in and acquire it. Mm. It's it's you have to really sort of split these things out. I mean, actually, David Perry himself, um, I, I saw him last year, um, and he was telling me um, he was telling me about the secrets of startups and stuff like that. Um, he also told me a lot about playing poker. Apparently, he's worked out a, a, an unbeatable system for uh, making money in Vegas. It, it, I don't know. He was telling me about it in a cab, so it's difficult to understand. Um, but anyway, he was saying um, with startups, there are basically two things you, you try to do um, if you're not trying to create an actual successful. You're saying David Perry rigs poker games? Yes, I'm saying that he, he's a Vegas cheat. <laughs> um, no, he. Uh, so he was saying there are two things that that you, that you might try to do. One is to create really, really amazing technology that no one else can replicate, and then you sell your company, and people will want that. And one is to create an enormous user base. Mm -hmm. um, and you do this by, you know, you pump loads and loads of VC into it until somebody out there, you know, in this case a Sony, goes, oh, I, I need all that technology and that know-how in order to achieve my mm. corporate strategy. I will pay through the nose for your company. Uh, then everyone involved gets rich, they get the technology they want, and it's happy days. Or, you know, they might look at the user base, as Facebook did with Instagram, and go... I want that. I want that technology, and I want that, that enormous user base. So I want to take that. On Live's um, strategy seems to have been to go. Well, both companies have developed similar technology. That's yeah. that's a very key thing. Gaikai has um, cared less about the end. Like cared less about getting it to users um, directly. They're not really interested in users directly. They're interested in the business side of it. Um, whereas On Live has very much looked at trying to build up a consumer audience. Um, they probably felt that you know if they had the technology and the consumer audience, then they'd be enormously attractive to somebody. Whereas on uh, whereas um, Gaikai probably felt you know we only really need this technology to work and be re and to have yeah. the infrastructure, and then we can sell that. And they've kind of you know proved that that um, that, that worked. Um, my my feeling is like if someone was going to buy on live, uh, and that someone may or may not be Microsoft, as everyone um, expects, that the price would be much higher. Um, I spoke to on live as well at E3, um, and they are. They're very much positioning themselves as a platform, almost a rival to Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah. Well, they, I, I don't think Microsoft will buy on live. I, don't, I just don't see why they why they would need to. I, I, mean, I, I think that's the thing. Why um, why haven't like a Sony R and D been developing this technology themselves? Well, well, quite. Um, that's, that's that's a really really good I don't question. Think but I think Microsoft has, has Microsoft doesn't need the infrastructure. Its yeah. Xbox Live infrastructure is insane. And Microsoft came out with a statement. Um, to this effect, um, in, in response to this, mm. uh, basically saying, um, you know, talking about Xbox Live and the infrastructure they've been making, and you know, people expect Microsoft maybe to move in on Live, but the other arguments I've heard is that you know, Microsoft do have expertise in this area, they do have money, they do yeah. have infrastructure, well, and I think they will handle it themselves. Whereas Sony yeah. are an electronics company, uh, and I think for them, the reason why they paid so much is because they yeah, probably yeah, had a look is. at. You know, mm. they were like, "Shall we develop this internally? How much will it cost us? You know, how long will it take? Mm -hmm. Why don't we just acquire Gaikai?" It's definitely a good way of catching themselves up. I mean, with Microsoft, you, you, the thing you always have to remember about Microsoft is they don't really care about games. Like, they care because they've got this nice product that does well, but they don't really care about Sony or Nintendo. They care about Apple and Google. Yeah. And Google has been doing cloud shit for so long that if Microsoft hasn't been developing its own stuff in the background for, you know, the best part of yeah a, a decade, I'd be astonished. I heard an interesting thing that um, uh, one of the people I spoke to, uh, Andy Payne, who's boss of uh, a publisher called Mastertronic and also chairman of Yuki, uh, was suggesting that, you know, as we are now, that, that Microsoft is, is well ahead with this and mm. they just haven't talked about it. Yeah, mm. well, absolutely. Like, I, I think it's it beyond a shadow of a doubt. I think mean, the, the acquisition sort of potential for, um, for on live, I don't think it comes from... from Microsoft, I think that's quite a parochial view. I think it comes from, you know, companies we're not even talking about. Like, what about all these huge Asian companies like Nexon and, yeah. and Tencent and people like that? You know, they're more like they're more likely and more loaded 
to want to get into Europe in, in this kind of way, Europe and America. Um, TV companies like LG or Samsung or whatever, they just want apps on their TVs. You know, Samsung wants to own every consumer electronics device, but I don't think it wants to be a software company. Yeah. Um, but no, I'd, I'd expect OnLive to be acquired by someone who we're not talking about. Um, what does this mean for Microsoft or Nintendo? It says on my little thing. I think we've covered Microsoft a bit, there but what about in, Nintendo? There was an interesting uh, thing I heard about Nintendo, which, I, which was an argument... Are they making I, a new Mario game? <laughs> an argument I quite like. It means if Nintendo don't have a streaming thing, it's not necessary, you don't necessarily have to have uh, a streaming component to your next-gen machine, but it's going to look like a glaring omission if you don't. Um, but this may be a way for Nintendo to leapfrog slash bury under the carpet all of the their past failures with online mm. uh, and jump sort of leap leapfrog uh, that stage and jump straight to streaming yeah. and make it look like they're actually quite yeah. a progressive. Company. Yeah, just as a side note, it's quite funny really that we're talking about Microsoft and Sony potentially dueling for a control of the next phase of of the of the uh, online gaming world, whereas Nintendo still grasping at how to make yeah. online multiplayer work in a way that anyone's interested in. So they may, uh, Nintendo may uh, jump ahead and, and then jump straight into streaming and then get on a level footing again, but then... Might do, you know, or they might just be making the Dreamcast too. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> Wrong company. <laughs> you know what I mean? The bit, I, it just, it just reminds me, remind me a lot. That either they will leap ahead or they'll... You know, remember when Dreamcast first came out and it had all these... Kind of like this very kind of stuttering, yeah, yeah, stuttering approach to sort of very stuttering approach to, to, to online though. Just yeah. before it kind of didn't quite, yeah. you know, it, it kind of missed the day. boat just yeah. about. And the only thing, the best thing was that was Fantasy Star. Well, no, it was more and, like, and like I just wondered, you wonder if 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 the Wii U is gonna gonna hit in the in that same way, like just before all the, all, all the, the streaming stuff go, yeah. goes big. Yeah. I know that that's the feeling I, I'm getting anyway. But I do hope that what you're saying is I happens. think. I think you. I think you may be right. I don't. I don't think it's a factor in their machine at the moment. Really. I think the thing with Dreamcast is uh, it didn't really miss the boat so much as arrive early for the boat with the wrong clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it had a fifty-six k modem built into it at a point when no one was no one was trying to do that. You know, everyone was uh, moving on from that. But yeah, um, I th- I do think though, like if you were to, I mean, if you were a betting person, like like David Perry, for example, um, you know, and you were you were wanted to bet on. Um, Nintendo uh, somehow leaping ahead <laughs> in, in online terms with yeah. Wii U, I think you wouldn't get your money back. No, and it may look, it, it may be fine for the next couple of years when, or, you know, the, when the next generation uh, Xbox and PlayStation machines arrive. When, when, they, when they first get here, it may look fine and Wii U may look okay. I don't know what its online capabilities, well, we kind of do. I don't know how they'll they'll. Oh, they're out. doing a partnership with CompuServe. <laughs> <laughs> and a free AOL disc in the post, <laughs> and uh, it may look it may oh, look okay, but then as streaming technology <laughs> really starts to take hold, and the the broadband infrastructure around you know the UK particularly gets a bit better and, a, mm. and spreads mm. a bit wider, then it, it might the gulf just might start to widen. It might start to look get a bit embarrassing. Yeah. Well, <sighs> Nintendo is always an emotive topic for the, mm. the Eurogamer podcast because we all, well, they're, like, they're like that cousin you have in school who has so much potential and you really want them to do well and you get so annoyed. Are you talking when the they... third person here Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get really upset. But then I really we did all, were just better. We did all slate, you know, I say it time and time again, we did all slate we. I know things are different but no one gave we a chance and it came out. Only before when it, you know, before it came out definitely. Yeah, um, we wrote the... I think that the, you're right that it did. I, I, th- I think that the difference now is that we've seen um... We've seen what happens with um, with a Nintendo system when it comes out, and it doesn't do terrifically well. Um, and and you know the 3DS is is recovered, but it's it's yeah. starting to stagnate again. And um, yeah, and I think I think we're um, we're all a little worried that uh, this is that was just a stopgap again. Yeah, fingers mm. crossed. Just one, one, one thing on the general street streaming thing. Uh, but whatever the case and whatever platform, I just I really hope that that um, and I haven't really seen much of what what the power of what guy stuff can do to be honest with you. But in terms of just like stuff like worldwide broadband speeds and mm. um, connectivity and whatever, because if, if there's one thing on PC recently that we looked at like um, sort of the the problems that Diablo's ha- had and, mm. and, and and stuff like that, and so much of that expect- expectation that everybody that 
is from the expectation that like everywhere has as as yeah. good a uh, like communication services yeah. as as Japan and and, Amer- and America, which, mm. which which they just don't. Yeah, and you know, so you just ha- hope that. You know, it will it really kick yeah. yeah. them. Yeah. By the time they actually um, yeah. get to the point of fruition with this, the, yeah. the, the world is kind of cool. Yeah, they will be on 4G, 5G, whatever yeah. as well. Yeah. So. 6G, mm. well, there, G6. There's an interesting devil's ad- uh, advocate argument to all this uh, streaming uh, technology. Was it go offline? Um, no, that it was. It, that this isn't um, the future, and in fact, it's just it's tech that will will cycle round mm. uh, and 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 fade out, and in five years' time, it will be. Well, let's um, let's let's before we move on to um, to writing it off, which we were going to do at the end of the podcast. Um, let's talk about. I mean, we talked about it in almost utopian terms, you know, as as you know, prior to Will's comment about how um, uh, you know it, all the things this can unlock because of, based on the assumption that it will work and it will be good. But there are obviously quite a few practical challenges that Sony yeah. faces in terms of getting it to work. Um, well, they've they, got, sorry, they've got to incorporate. Uh, a different infrastructure into their own infrastructure. And as we've seen from um, last year's debacle with PlayStation Network, they haven't exactly um, mastered no. everything yet themselves. Um, it's it's going to take a lot of work. It's not a you know click your fingers job. And you can't all, just copy and paste it. Yeah, and all of a sudden it works. And you know, Gaikai's got to shed all of its business so far because presumably, presumably they won't be working well, with. What about our Gaikai page, for example? Well, no know, what's going to happen there? What's going to happen to our Gaikai page? Do we have to take it down? I'd imagine they'll be having meetings about that right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kaz Harai is talking about that right now. He's going, why are we on this website? <laughs> take it down. So there's there's a lot of work to do. Um, and well, we'll just delete the uh, link, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah. but, but um, and of course... I'll do it on my phone. Uh, we, you know, we don't know exactly how it's... You know, it's going to work with PS3 hardware, well, and then how it's going to work with. Yeah, I mean, Rich Ledbetter from Digital Foundry, um, uh, who, who probably is the only person that we know who is qualified to speculate on any of this, was He's talking part, about. Part chipboard. He, he is, in fact, um, he, yeah, he, he is actually a streaming technology in and of himself. <laughs> um, he doesn't really exist. He's a, he's a sentient computer. I imagine um, him like Robocop. He's a lot like Robocop, mm. actually. He does. Um, he, uh, you know, by day he he writes um, stories about technology. By night he stalks the. Um, no, actually, I'm not going anywhere with that. Just get, <laughs> that's just going to get. You did weird. say stalks. <laughs> well, you know, Robocop too. You know, lest we forget. Um, hopefully, we have forgotten. What was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah. He was talking about some of the actual practical problems that and challenges of of, of kind of making this work. Um, in terms of like, if you were to try to make PlayStation Three games work sort of through cloud streaming for example he was pointing out that all of the all of the technological refinement that's gone on so far with Gaikai with online etc has been geared towards PC games yeah. so it, you've got a PC game that um, uh, has a certain amount of um, controller lag but relatively little because they've refined that down they've, they've sort of shaved it down by coding the game slightly differently and then the lag that you get from the game from the internet connection from the sort of television or whatever all amounts to what it what is quite an acceptable level of lag in some cases there are some games like rich's example is bullet storm which if you play it on gaikai is as as good as playing it on an xbox because the level of controller lag is actually equivalent mm-hmm. um or the level of lag overall is actually equivalent but if you if you're playing stuff on a playstation 3 where the games are frequently running at 30 frames per second and have inherent controller lag at that level already and then you add the additional lag of yeah. control response going over the internet of the tv and whatever it can it can become unmanageable um so doing it with a PlayStation 3 might be very different, very difficult. But he was also saying that the PlayStation 4 could be developed in a, in a, in a way where there's a kind of Gaikai model that lives in uh, data centers running PlayStation 4 games uh, that have been coded specifically to remove some of these problems. Um, but that's just that's an example of just one thing, yeah. that, uh, one enormous thing that they would have to overcome if they were trying to make that work. And you know, um, Sony... It doesn't always fill us with the greatest confidence that they can, you know, they can do stuff like this. And it, we don't know exactly, again, what the terms of the deal are. Do have Sony bought all this technology, and then are they waving goodbye to all the people that made it? Are they planning to use Dave Perry as basically the world's largest mobile phone master? Yeah, and and his portfolio of pictures. <laughs> Towering over the world, like just waving his satellite arms <laughs> to direct traffic. Should we even be really thinking about like um, Dave maybe, Perry? Yeah, well, true. That is a very good point. <laughs> but like, should we also? But like, I mean, we're talking about you know, I don't know, Bulletstorm and all this, this AAA stuff. But you know, 
people like us, they're like they're like uh, the people that play the the, the big the big shooty games. Mm. We're kind of used to the, exi- the, the the existing models. We don't necessarily need it as much. But whereas the new mm. the new band of casual gamers, people that are used to playing games on their iPhone and stuff like that, yeah. they, they 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 don't need stuff like that. They just want Angry Birds or something similar on their on on on, the, on their telly. Mm. Also, you know, but it, would it, you know, it, would it would it not be something a bit, you know, a bit more casual mm. the sort of games that they'd be lo- they'd be looking to stream I think they'd probably I mean judging by Andrew House's comments they'd be doing a mixture yeah um, but you know but, but you're right I mean uh, don't believe and you know but like you know yeah. they'll, they'll, they, will, they would say that wouldn't they of, of course of course yeah. um, I think long I mean long term the, it doesn't make sense for them to be only doing this for casual stuff um, but yes in the, in the shorter term yeah. and also just as a parallel thing you would still expect them to be streaming um, you know your, your simpler games that, yeah, as yeah. you say, will, will actually, you know, in a lot of cases, run better. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I think I think that's the. Tar- I think that would be objective one for it them. It brings a there's, there's a, a question that kind of lurks behind all that, and that's how they they bill for that. And and Sony is uh, ha- is becoming more open to to free to play is is, mm. is is the question really. And does that now sit behind that instant access? Because if you can instantly access something, then you have to think about how you're going to pay mm. for it. Because mm. as we know, someone on an iPhone or something like that doesn't want to pay five pounds up front necessarily, yeah. and then mm. play the game. They want to play the game first, then maybe pay seventy pence, and then carry on paying. It'd be pretty cool, right? You know, if it was just something like you know the new Planet side, yeah, on, on a console, bang, straight straight, straight mm. in, you know, and that kind of free free to play kind of way, yeah. <laughs> Work. Yeah, I mean, like you know, I think although you know we had a bit of a rant about some free to play games last week, there there are um, there are very good examples of games like like the um, the high res games, uh, Global Agenda and Tribes Ascend in mm-hmm. particular, which are much better with the free to play model. And Sony, as you say, has been more open to it. Um, I mean, Dust Five One Four, I think, is an example of this. It's the fir- that's the one that's yeah, that's, yeah paving the way. Um, but also, when you think about it, PlayStation Plus is an example of a different kind of business model which yeah. they're trying, which is a subscription thing, which. When you consider this move, suddenly takes on suddenly a, a potentially greater significance. You know, yeah. the idea of subscribing to access to a lot of different games. Yeah. I think we will um, we will see that the first uh, content or free instant access games we see will be those uh, will smaller, be smaller, smaller, smaller budget games. Mm. Uh, the, the the PlayStation Minis equivalents and, mm. and that that kind of thing, uh, and maybe they'll start getting a look in now. And it also might mean. Uh, I've heard this argument. It also might mean a way in for the the middle tier of gaming again, yeah. um, that are you know squashed in shops mm. because. Let's um let's cross the streams a little bit here. Now, Will, you are a, a game developer these days, as well as um as well as the Velvet Owl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you work on um, the excellent project Zomboy. As a game developer, if you were offered uh, the opportunity to open the door to a whole bunch of PlayStation users who suddenly had streaming internet access on their consoles for different types of games would that interest you uh, I think it, it, it would but maybe not as the developer of Project Zomboy because we'd we'd very much uh, we're already on PC Mac and Line mm. and Linux so you know and we're quite a small we're quite, we're quite we're quite a small team but you know so yes, maybe one day when we finish the game, but that's not for like three or four years yet. So mm. well, that will be roughly when Sony gets around to. Uh, well, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. maybe the, maybe this is it. Maybe mm. maybe you you should uh, you should drop Kaz a line. <laughs> see, yeah. see, see what's it's going on. Drop Kaz a line sounds a bit like his name. Sounds sounds a bit racist actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. Um, we talked a little bit about what this um, uh, might mean for on live. Um, was there any reaction from them yesterday? Uh, that we're not commenting at the they're moment. not commenting um, interesting but yeah it, what can we read into that it's uh, like you say um, they now have they can't <laughs> there was a great uh, quote they can delete Kaz from their mobile yeah with someone saying they? they can no longer pretend that Sony's going to buy them so you know that's one <laughs> one less person to bump the, the price of their business yeah so. right well um, but I think you're right I think the, the big players from uh, the other side of the world might come in and, and mm. conquer well, yeah. I mean, going back to the just going back to the, the broadband point, as you say, you know, the US is um, is quite mature in this respect. Um, that's, that's a sentence I don't use very often. Um, but uh, uh, Europe is more more sketchy, and and Japan's kind of Japan's good. But you know, when you look at Asia as a whole and and other areas of emerging markets, it's, it it gets patchier again. Um, so yeah, it could when be, Skynet takes over. <laughs> 
It's just another another if, way to if make we, the uh, make the ascendance easier. If, if we, are, you, are you saying that, that Sky? I mean, this could be a good protection for Skynet because obviously Skynet could just get bored and, and just play, you know, or get distracted playing PlayStation games all day. I just think I, I just think that basically should 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 a doomsday scenario happen <laughs> and where everything is based on streaming rather than physical media, we'll be screwed. Well, we're pretty screwed already. I mean, have you have you ever like um, lost your phone um, and uh, like in a in a city somewhere way away from home <laughs> and like had to sudden had to do anything? Is this like what a choose impossible? your own adventure game? I think no, I no, think no, the seriously. discovery that a, a a simple phone call now costs at least forty p. I barely know how to <laughs> phone anyone anymore. It's like. You don't um, want to. Do, you don't want to do it. Those re- those receivers, they're how, mucky. How do you? How, first of all, where's a phone booth? How do I? Oh no, I haven't got my phone. Can't find one. Um, Look so what you happened to you Colin Farrell in a phone booth. Well, though. quite. Yeah. You, you you go. You're like, how do I? What's a number for anything? I don't understand. I don't know what numbers are for anything. I know my number. I don't know any other numbers. Hmm. Um, so the, on the other street. hand, though, uh, because everything is stored in the cloud, if uh, robots were to attack and you had to leave your house in a hurry, you could because there's nothing to grab. That's true. Anything. And also, if you just if you sort of crept up behind the robot and did like swipe to unlock, um, yeah. then you could hack into the robot and use it to access the cloud. Yeah, and then you could have free phone calls. <laughs> yes, you could. Yes. <laughs> those are the days. Do you remember the days, the early days of mobiles when everyone had those engineers' numbers and you could get free calls by pretending to be an orange engineer? <laughs> really? I don't. Yeah. I don't remember that. Oh, you, you, you obviously, you obviously that was a, that's the big thing around university. Everybody had a special uh, code you could put in because you know. Wow, I remember. I remember when I used to. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> no, obviously, you didn't. Yeah. I remember when a friend of mine um, was presented with one of the with like a, a dial-up number for for BC, like a, a an internet dial-up number that was um, that was free and it was some sort of engineer thing. Um, and this friend used it for an afternoon and then got terrified um, that he might get busted, so he stopped using it. That was Sim- the thing. That was the yeah, thing. yeah. It's a bit like that time that I I, I bought the wrong train ticket. I brought one for Amersham instead of Chesham, and I got off at Chesham, and I thought they were going to throw me in prison. Wow. Um, that was last week. Wow. Uh, quite unusual views around the world. Um, cool. Well, I think we've we've um, <laughs> we've we've run this we've, we've run this stream dry. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Uh, let's let's talk then. Let's move on from Sony buying Gaikai. Um, although, obviously, Dave Perry, if you are listening. First of all, that's a miracle, and second, congratulations, because you know you've really, uh, you've really played everyone here brilliantly. Um, well, like yeah, yeah. your hand of poker. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Yeah. Did you have you seen that? You noticed that? I thought did you did you drop that in in Pompeii? Is it because David Perry has slightly larger hands than most people, so that he can cover most of the table with his hand? No, so he's really tall, so he can actually see over the top of your cards. Ah, uh, okay. See, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Physics. Over. Like the, the crane. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, but you know, he, when on live announced, he came out very quickly. Um, um, he didn't come out. <laughs> he <laughs> said very quickly, I'm doing something similar. And since then, he's he's kind of, you know, chased after them and told everyone how great he is. And eventually, he's, he's got, you know, $380 million. He always had, um, or seemed to have a very clear... Um, Exit strategy. Yeah, well, via yeah. Via the bank. Um, well done. He's a nice guy as well. Yes, he is. Well he is a very nice guy. And he's, um, he, funnily enough, he's going to be at Develop next week in Brighton, talking about Earthworm Jim. Is he really? Yeah. So I imagine his, unless he Let's see out, him anyway. wriggle out of that one. Oh, God. Oh, I can't wait. He's <laughs> gonna, you can imagine the first that, 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 sentence of his speech will be something like, you guys might be interested in something else that happened to me last week, but I can't talk about it. I don't care, mate. Earthworm Jim. Tell me about Earthworm Jim. <laughs> don't soil <laughs> yourself. Wait. <He's, laughs> do, do you remember the cartoon as well? I used to love the Earthworm Jim cartoon. I think I had the comic. Oh, it was great. Oh, it was amazing. I, I wonder if I wonder if this has all just been an elaborate plan on his part to drum up money to, to develop a new Earthworm. That's an expensive game. Three hundred and eighty million. Maybe it's an MMO. An Earthworm. No, you need MMO. you need about seven hundred million to do an unsuccessful MMO these days. <laughs> if it's fully voiced. I don't think you can. <laughs> Queen ugly slu- uh, ugly slug for a butt. Do you remember that? Do you remember her? I Vaguely, think. yeah. Mm. I remember getting stuck on the first level when I was about eight because I couldn't work out what to do at the oh, end. Oh, I forget that you're a child. God, yeah, sorry. you're so young. Oh, sorry. Okay. With so much power. Okay. Well, let's um, let's let's move on because it's getting getting on for my bedtime. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> the other thing we want to talk about was um, was uh, was rest, which is which is actually happening in oh god, like three, two, three days. It's Thursday, Thursday um, Friday, and Saturday. Yeah, so it's, four it's days. Really. Four, four days. Yeah. 
I don't know what day it is. And it's um, going to be hot. It's, it's going to be well. It's going to be quite drizzly actually by the look of the, the weather outside. The it window, is sunny outside here in Brighton, where the Res <laughs> Game Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is well, coming. I've had conflicting views on whether this is a good thing or a bad thing for us because um, I was like, well, you might get less walk-ups if people are um, walk-ups is a, is a sort of jargon term for people who walk up to the venue on the day. Um, but you might get less of them if um, it's raining. But then again. If they come down to the seaside and they can't do anything, maybe yeah, yeah maybe they'll, they'll they'll head in. We will see. Um, but yeah, uh, we've got loads and loads of stuff. So um, we've got playable games like Borderlands Two, um, Shoot Mania, Ghost Recon, Aliens, Prison Architect. Prison Architect looks hot. That does look cool. Um, and and then we've, for the sessions, um, uh, we've got loads and loads of developers, including uh, Randy Pitchford, um, Creative Assembly doing uh, Rome Two, as we found out yesterday. Um, Peter Molyneux. Hey. Remember him? Um, and uh, Dean Hall, who makes Daisy, which is obviously pretty hot right now. Um, but he's not the only uh, person doing a, a zombie survivalism sort of uh, game. Isn't he? Doing a session. But who else is? Ah, well, well <laughs> this guy. <laughs> well, according to the sleepless, terrified nights I've had, I think, <laughs> I think that uh, myself, Andy, Mash and Chris will be doing a presentation at 12 o'clock on Friday morning. Oh, boom! Yeah. Pretty exciting. You're opening the show. We are opening <gasps> the show. Wow, that's, that's a lot of Things can only get better. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually thinking of putting that music on after after we finish. Uh, we'll never get the rights. Uh, <laughs> so are you, are, you, uh, are, you, are you pumped? Are you, are you, it sounds like you're uh, terrified. Yeah, well... You shouldn't be. It's going to be fine. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's just... Uh, Think of it like a wedding, where everyone wants you to do well. And, and I think you know. they do, but, but, but I think, but I think this, this is also us kind of like um, we've been quite inward looking for ever since, like you know, we had the burglary last year and everything. Yeah. And, everything. and I think that this is our this is our kind of like uh, hi, we're here and we've done all this kind of moment. And uh, so I think it's it's quite a big it's quite a big moment for us to to, to, to be honest to be yeah. honest with you. And like you know, I think that we got some really good stuff to show. And we got a really inter- interesting story to tell. Yeah, uh, and it's quite funny, and quite. And we've got um, uh, images of a cartoon raccoon. Yeah, to help I was going through. I thought that I thought that was real because Will was nice enough to share some of his um, his plans with me, and, and, and I was very excited by the cartoon raccoon. Yeah. Are there going to be any pyrotechnics? Um, no. No, <laughs> uh, because they couldn't really get the get the no 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 uh, the, because the because health and safety exactly exactly we all wanted to do all sorts of stuff we had to shoot him down yeah. not using a real gun yeah. because of health and safety. so no we just got a, a cartoon raccoon which is uh, called you know. Spiffo. Will it be better than Nintendo's E3 conference? Um, well, if they cancelled it, would be better than <laughs> Nintendo's E3 conference, surely. We, um, well, we got the uh, the Zomboid Land to finish to finish up on. <laughs> The collection <laughs> collection of vaguely disappointing mini games. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds perfect. Too, yeah. soon. too soon. Too soon. Yeah, sorry. So um, you, I think you, I saw something on Twitter about you. You having just done a new release of the game. Is that? Yeah, we've uh, we're doing we do test builds on the on the forum, mm. and so the R build, well, R one, R two, R three, basically. So it's we've um, we've gone we've got we've gone back and because basically we got to the point we were building up to like the big release of. Uh, of, of the of the new proper update, mm. um, but then we, we kind of we sat down. And we realised that we was having it quite is it was quite a demanding game performance wise. So mm. basically, we just we kind of went back in and have rewrote the graphics engine, taking an awful long time. Mm. Uh, and you know, for like the, the our, our fans, were, you know, were a bit antsy, saying, you know, where is it? But it was just, it was just a big job, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, so we f- we finally got it out. It's still it's still quite buggy, but anyone anyone that's bought the game can go, go and play it. But also it's also got all of our new um, animation sprite systems in there, and new mm. co- new combat systems as well. Combat needs a little bit of work to it, but the animation is pretty much there, and everyone really likes them. So brilliant. So good, yep. Yeah. So not nice of you to get that out in the in the week for your talk as well. Well, so. we were hoping to have the whole the, the whole release out by by then, but yeah. you know it's just the way it goes. Really, something thing, 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 things crop up, yeah, that you don't you don't expect. But um, but yeah, but it, mean, but it means that we've got some cool cool new new stuff that people that you maybe haven't been keeping close tabs on us. Yeah, will, will be quite new to them. And we got a new uh, I've got got a guy called Josh in Montana. Uh, who's making it? It's like we've got a really cool kind of uh, half live action half. Gameplay trailer that he's making for us, oh, and cool. that should be ready in the next couple of days. So live action, eh? Yeah, nice. He's burnt. He's, he, he built a, a fake house in his garden, burnt it down. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler. So, um. <laughs> so yeah. So that'll be. So, we, so that'll be a bit like a bit of a sneak peek. But that'll actually go live online. Um, 
uh, when the when the actual full update is out. So uh, so that would be a that'll be a little nice. thing Brilliant. for any Zomboid fans in the audience to see, which will be fun. Well, that's awesome. And if you um, if you aren't coming to the show, um, first of all, how dare you? Um, but second of all, um, you'll be able to read um, updates on. Um, on Eurogamer and, and Rock Paper Shotgun about all this sort of thing in a, in, a, in what will probably be quite a surreal situation um, I, will, I will introduce your session and then Rob or one of his colleagues will probably report on what you're saying really? <laughs> whilst you're saying it well be nice <laughs> <laughs> I'm always oh, nice <laughs> I am that's very sensitive yeah. and, um, uh, and I, I think I also over the well, well basically anyone that plays the game where you just will be talking on like could do could shout on Twitter if anyone wants to meet up, go to the pub and whatever as well, because we're that kind of indeed. <laughs> we'll buy you a drink, yep. kind of developer, and um, and also I think uh, Rock Paper Shotgun they're doing like a game, game jam, jam thing yeah. on the on the on the Saturday, like the last yeah. thing on the Saturday I think it is, and so I, I'm fairly sure that. Um, Mash, well, basically, the Indie Stone Art Department are going to be up for like, like helping out, helping out with that. Or yeah, it sounds really cool. I mean, a, a game jam for those who, who don't know is, is, as I understand it, a, a bunch of um, developer type people sitting on stage designing a game together with help from the audience potentially um, for you know about uh, for however long the session lasts. Given that it's being curated by RPS, I can only imagine what will, what will. I mean, presumably terrain and hit points will be key considerations. I don't know. It, 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 given that John Walker's around, I'd imagine it'll star his little little. <laughs> bu- what's his little bunny called? The, oh, little, uh, oh God, he's going to kill me. Colin the bunny or no, something. No, it's not Colin. Um, he's a cool bunny. He John. is a bloody cool bunny, actually. But I'd imagine it'll be the, his, his his platform adventures or something. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or John Walker's platform adventures. <laughs> I'd, pl- I'd, I'd, I I'd, play I'd, I'd, I'd play that game. He's doing another. John Walker actually from RPS is doing another panel um, on the on the Saturday in the morning, which is called um, the fifth annual Rock Paper Shotgun Indie Mud Wrestling Championships, which he's described to me as a game quiz show panel thing. Um, so that that will probably be unmissable. Um, I, I think um, that that should, that should be quite interesting. John is quite a magnetic personality. Um, uh, and he's quite loud, um, and he'd be quite good as a sort of boisterous um, quiz master type person, ordering developers around. Um, so yeah, that'd be good. I think um, having seen the, the the the, I don't know how much of the Rome Two Total War there that they'll, they'll be showing off, but I having 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 seen like the the journalist like demo, mm. uh, I think that'll be. I think but, you know, if if you if you even if to be honest, even if you don't particularly like those games, you mm. need to be in that session because yeah. the. Um, the what that the new engine for the new Total War game is stunning. It's going to look like a. It's basically a next generation. Like as far mm. as people's idea of a next generation game is, that's the sort of technology. Yeah, it, look, it looks like um, it's like it's full on. It's it's having played, having having seen. I don't know the Alexander film, the Gladiator, all that all that kind of stuff. Is that kind of it's got this amazing. Everything's bathed in this kind of golden epic kind of classical mm. sheen. But there's just so many, so many men, so much stuff go- going so on. So much detail. So much detail. Is there it's a just character so called good. Maximus? Well, no. Praetorian. There, there's, there's one called oh Scipio. Oh, Scipio. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is he a What's that, Scipio? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, What's that? you got to go around the Carthaginians. <laughs> <laughs> Praetorian. Oh, God. Not... <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, so uh, we've got we've got as as you say, Rome two will be in uh, in Creative Assembly's a session. Um, uh, uh, You've got some really good speakers actually. Mo- Molyneux is always be good. Yeah, um, Randy Pitchfork should is <laughs> Randy br- Pick- Pitchfork should. <laughs> yeah, but, but he's he's he's, he's mag- magnetic on stage. Paul Wedgwood yeah. also always always yeah. delivers up st- up when he's up there talking about mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, shoot, mania looks good as well. I'm yeah, I've been talking to those guys about their session because I'm I'm helping to organise it all and. and the um, and the stuff they have planned. Let's just say, if you thought that Ubisoft's um, conference at E3 was the highlight because of the um, the slightly over ambitious approach <laughs> they took, <laughs> then you might want to come to the um, the Ubisoft sessions uh, at Rest because um, I, I think there may be a slight continuation of that. Um, they have some cool ideas, um, which we'll be talking about a little bit more in the in the couple, next couple of days, actually. Um, and yeah, uh, some of the other sessions. I mean, you know, it, it, it says something that um, you know the kind of that people like introversion, um, in particular, are considered almost the second tier, or uh, mm. speakers because of the the quality of all of the, the the people that we've got. But but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one actually. And that was one of the first ones um, uh, we booked. The first, some of the first guys to really show us some support. Um, and they're going to talk about how um, 
as as um, Chris Delay put it, or maybe it was Mark Morris, um, how a prison architect rose phoenix-like from the still smouldering ashes of subversion. So <laughs> I said, give me a title, and that's what they came back with. Those guys need a break, don't they? They just, they don't seem to be... I was playing Uplink on, on the iPad the other day, though, and, and that's a lovely conversion. So, you know, it wasn't hopefully even that then, was that? It was like a fan conversion, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Well, oh. well yeah, well, obviously, it's, you know, it's, there, it's yeah. there with their blessing and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything. But, but like, no, it's, it's not yeah. as good. Um, so, yeah, uh, but yeah, prison architect. Oh, what a cool idea for a game. So yeah, that's that's Res. Um, Friday and Saturday this week in Brighton. Um, uh, please, please come. You can come to our party on Friday and do drinks and stuff. Um, and on on the Saturday, we're going to go on the pier and play arcade games after the show. Yeah, and do fun. look out for us as well. Yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. You, if you if you recognise us, we'll be walking around with Res t-shirts on. My head will be bobbing like this. You probably yeah. can't see it if yeah. you're just listening to this. Yeah, we're going to call him Robblehead. And I've got lots of hair and beard. You've got more hair than you. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I have got more hair under my clothes as well. There is more hair. And there it shall stay. <laughs> cool. Um, that's kind of uh, that's kind of it, I think. We've uh, we've, uh, we've, we've, we've exhausted everything. I'm exhausted. Um, yeah, exactly. I need to lie down. It's almost bedtime. Um, so thank you very much uh, to uh, my guests, uh, the Velvet Hour Will Porter. Thank you very much. And, uh, and Rob Purchase. Thank you very much, Tom. That's okay. Uh, and thank you to, for, to everyone for listening, or indeed watching, for the two people who do that. Um, we'll see you at Resden. Hopefully speak to you next week as well. Bye. Bye. Bye.